I'm back. I'm back for the rest of our Cooler Master ITX build. And uh, no, sleeping's not allowed around here. So for our motherboard, I'm gonna be using Aorus X570 ITX. <laughs> this is the same one that I bought at Micro Center like forever ago. This is literally the only X570 or B550 ITX motherboard that I have. Really wish that it had more USB ports and better audio. Ugh. But it's a solid board. I've overclocked the bejesus out of it to the point that I've got a little bit of heat discoloration on the back because uh, I didn't maybe have an, as much cooling as I, as I probably should have. But this thing is a champ. I can run, I can do insane things with overclocks assuming that you have a Ryzen chip that has it. I've put a 5900X in here. So this is a 5900X build. The power supply, of course, is the Cooler Master V850 that you guys probably saw a video or two ago. Now, the GPU that I've ultimately settled on is the ASRock Tai Chi 6800 XT. And one funny thing about this GPU is because it's gonna be in the very bottom of the case facing down, it's gonna give me LED ground effects. I am gonna do test fits with the RTX 3090 so you can get an idea of how this would work if you were gonna go team green. You know, I ain't, I ain't hating. You know, we're all equal, equal opportunity builders here. And of course it's in the NR200 from Cooler Master, which is a genuinely impressive ITX case. There's almost enough room for micro ATX. In fact, there are some, you know, quote unquote short micro ATX motherboards that will actually fit in here if you rotate and mount your power supply a different way. But for CPU cooling, I'm gonna try to do something a little insane. This is ridiculous. I don't really actually recommend a 280 millimeter cooler for an ITX build, but I'm gonna try it and it's for science. At least I don't currently recommend it. Maybe that'll change. I mean, look how enormous these fans are. It's gonna move a lot of air. One thing I really like about the Cooler Master uh, coolers, a lot of them, most of them, have a retention bracket for AM4, which doesn't involve changing anything with the motherboard or replacing the socket. Uh, for somebody like me that's constantly swapping devices and components, this works really well because I can just pop it off, pop it on. I don't have to worry about losing the accessories that go with the motherboard or anything like that. It's a pretty nice solution. The other thing is the thumb screws are captured. So I like that as well because, you know, it's like, hey, I'm using an AM4, you know, something today, and then maybe I'm gonna switch. And it's like, can I even find the thumb screws? No, it's just all built in in one, one solution. Even though it's got its own separate AM4 baggie, you gotta dive into the other baggie to get the screws to mount the AM4 brackets. In the accessory box, it also includes a four pin fan splitter, which is usually pretty handy on an ITX build because ITX motherboards never have enough. And then we've also got a breakout cable, which provides power and RGB connections. There's also a separate included micro RGB controller that's just got a button. So you can hit the button and get your RGB controls. Now this thing comes with good thermal paste. You don't have to use special thermal paste. You got a little syringe of it right there. It is more than enough, but I'm using something different and special for this build. Now, the question is, I gotta mount these fans to this bracket with that radiator. Now you should know there's only a couple of ways to install this. The only real way that you're gonna be able to do it is to sandwich the uh, fans and the outside of the case with the radiator in the middle. Will we clear the side? We do. Now remember, whenever you're installing this kind of a cooler, you always wanna be sure that you tighten each thumb screw down equally so that you're applying even pressure on the CPU because you don't want it to be sitting at an angle. You want the, the thermal paste and the CPU and the, uh, you know, the cooler to basically be as one. Next up, I'll connect the fan header and the digital RGB header. And that should be it that we need for this pump, other than, you know, the fan connection. Now, because this is an ITX system and I've got a limited number of fan headers, I'm going to use the Y cable that came with the Cooler Master to uh, better control my fans. Perfect fit, like a glove. Now one mounting trick that I learned with this is because the tolerances on this case are so tight, instead of taking your PCIe power cables out here and making a really rough connection, bring them in out the front, down and around through here. So you end up having a connection like that. The cables are much less likely to bind and you've got a little bit more room to play. And here, if we were mounting the 3090, you can see that our tolerances would actually be a little bit better than it is with the Tai Chi because the Tai Chi is a longer card. But even mounting the 3090 exactly the same way, coming in at the edge here with the cables is gonna be the way to go. All right, so the other thing that this Cooler Master case gets right is the GPU plugs directly into the motherboard. 
As we move into higher and higher speed peripherals, we still don't have a properly working PCI Express 4 riser cable that we can count on. Heck, most of the PCI Express 3 riser cables will lead to occasional black screens or crashes or anything else like that. A lot of the problems that we had on the level one forum uh, were with people that were trying to use a PCI Express 4 graphics card. They had set PCI Express 3 mode, but just for giggles, there's at least three or four cases where there are intermittent crashes and black screens with PCI Express 4 GPUs went away when they stopped using their PCI Express 3 riser cable in PCI Express 3 mode. So just avoid the headache and have your GPU plugged directly into the motherboard, unless you're savvy and can put up with the headache. Look at this easy accessibility of the M.2. It's another feature of this case that's somewhat unique is how much breathability you have right here. Now the front panel connections on this case are a little odd. You've got two USB 3 ports, reset, power. The power button is sort of lit up. It's the Cooler Master logo, but it doesn't say Cooler Master, which is pretty cool. It's understated, it's a nice touch. And then we have the combo four pin headphone microphone connector. Now some people like that kind of connector, some people don't. But it is a combination connector, so keep that in mind. If you're going to use a separate cable, you need a splitter cable. It doesn't come with one. Some other features I noticed when I was building in this case. It's got kind of a lot of 2.5 inch bays. Okay, so there's two in the front, and I did check. That's an Optane and a 4 terabyte NAND flash. That is more storage than you'll ever really need in an ITX. Famous last words. Although, I mean, you could get an 8 terabyte M.2 and still have the cache. But those are U.2 drives. You can get M.2 breakouts. You know, I do that with the X570 all the time. They work fine in the front. The clearance is really close. It is a little bit of a stretch to cram in both the PCIe power and those really tall two and a half inch drives, but that means you'll have no problem if you're using a regular, you know, a SATA drive, two and a half inch. These are much less tall. Those drives are about twice as tall, um, but they still fit, they still work. Cooler Master has given plenty of room for that to work. In this configuration, in the top here, between the radiator and the power supply, in a pinch, you probably could get another one or two two and a half inch drives right on that power supply bracket. It comes with standoff screws to be able to do that. Taking it in and out is a little bit more problematic than the front because, you know, obviously just popping off the front, but the airflow is much better. Those drives in the front, they run a little warm. And so I may need to relocate them to the back here because there's not really a lot going on in the front in terms of airflow. That would definitely be a complaint. So overall testing this thing, the noise and thermals were surprising, but in the best possible way. It seems like this thing does really well with the single 120 millimeter fan configured as an exhaust here at the top. I've got two 140 millimeter fans on the side bringing fresh air in from the side. And then the GPU is drawing fresh air in from the bottom and exhausting it out both sides. The GPU uh, operated within the thermal envelope that I've seen from regular, more enclosed ATX desktop systems. Uh, the CPU was running at ice cold relative to you know, what you would expect for a 5900X with a 280 millimeter cooler on it. So I can't really tell that this case has any deleterious effects on overall system cooling and system performance. It's about equivalent to a tower case that has more fans, which is kind of mind blowing. In terms of noise levels, it's barely above a whisper. I mean, it's been on for the, the whole time doing this video, admittedly not doing anything, but I do have some B-roll of it with game benchmarks running. It definitely ramps up and you can definitely hear it, but it's not annoyingly loud. One thing I was worried about because all of the panels are made out of metal was, you know, eventually you get a little bit of a hum in there. Definitely the top 120 millimeter fan that's included, you know, it's a good thing that it's on those anti-vibration pads because you can put your hand here and definitely feel a little bit of vibration from the fan. You can feel it, but you can't hear it. Eventually, if that becomes a problem, a little bit of poster putty would probably take care of that. I was expecting to have that with this case because a lot of places, like with the side panels, it's metal on metal, but that wasn't the case. So Cooler Master has done an incredible job engineering this case. I would not have expected this level of build quality and this level of features at this price point. Well done, Cooler Master. Cheerio, pip pip. See, cause it's eyes with a handlebar mustache.